everyone. Happy Monday. It's my favorite day of the week because I get to craft with all of you. Today I am excited because my shipment of the new basic white cardstock came in. So I'm going to actually do a side by side comparison for all of you so that you can see how it stamps on um, in comparison to our whisper white, which is now retired. And then I have two super cute cards that we are going to make together. As always, if you are joining us, please let me know that you're here. Send me some hearts or some thumbs up or drop a comment in the comment section so that I can interact with you as we craft together. So I am going to switch the camera over to my craft station and let's get started. Okay, so... We are, hi Lisa, we are ready to go. Um, so you can see on my craft station here, I have a piece of the new basic white and a piece of the whisper white. And at first glance, they don't look very different, but I do find that the whisper white actually has a little bit of a yellowish tinge compared to the basic white. So the in my opinion the basic white is more of a true white which i really do like and i do actually find that the basic white is a little bit heavier than our old whisper white which again is a vote in the right direction in terms of feel the whisper white had that almost like a satiny feel to it the basic white doesn't have that it feels more like our other card stocks so I just have, I pulled out some Flirty Flamingo ink and this lovely bloom from the Forever and Always stamp set. And I thought I would just use that to stamp on the two pieces of cardstock so that you can see um, how they perform. Hi Francis. I'm going to stamp on the Whisper White first because this is what we know and what we love. I'm going to hold it up to the camera so we can get a good view of what that looks like. So that's the Flirty Flamingo on the Whisper White. Nice and crisp. So let's see how it works on the Basic White. So again, I'm going to ink my image really well. And there's the basic white. So in terms of the coverage, it covers just as nicely. The image is just as sharp. No real difference in terms of performance in that regard. So let's try another stamp. These are some leaves and this is from the Enjoy the Moment stamp set, which I've been playing with a lot and we are actually going to use a little bit later. I'm going to pull in a different color ink. So this is gray granite. And again, I'm going to go on the whisper white first. So there's the whisper white. You can see that beautiful detail in the pods. And then here on the basic white. So again, side by side comparison, really there's no difference in the performance of the stamped images, which makes me extremely happy. So all in all, um, I'm very happy with the new basic white. I think it's going to be a great product to add to your collection. And if you haven't already tried it, then I would recommend you do so. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, multitasking here. I'm <laughs> trying to share it to my, my personal feed because I forgot to do that at the start. So I'm going to put these to the side and let's move on to our first project. So I'm just gonna close these inks because I'm not using them on the first one. Did everybody have a great weekend? I had a really good weekend. I actually spent more time in my stamp studio than I have in quite some time. 
and I got a lot accomplished, which was fantastic. All right, so the first card we're going to do tonight is featuring the Touch of Ink stamp set, and this is a celebration reward. So this is one of the items that you can choose with celebration happening right now. So for those of you that are new to Stampin' Up! or new to Celebration, it is our biggest sale of the year, so to speak, and there are rewards for the different ways you choose to participate. So the, the easiest way to participate is just to shop. When you shop for the products that you know and you love, um, every $60 in purchases before tax and shipping is going to earn you a Celebration reward, and there are different levels of rewards. So you can earn um, level one rewards, which are $60 and level two rewards, which are $120 and the rewards are cumulative, which is fantastic. So this is the card we're going to make with the stamp set tonight. And I am using, um, purple posy and seaside spray as my two main colors. And the reason for that is they are in colors that retire in June. So if you love these colors, like I do, you want to make sure that you stock up sooner rather than later because when Stampin' Up! announces the retirement lists and these are on it, they will go fast within hours, if not minutes. So if you love these colors, definitely you want to stock up. So this card we're doing, again, features the touch of ink. So we're using this flower image here and it is a fun fold. So it opens up in the center. I'm sure there's a proper name for it, but I can't for the life of me remember what that is right now. So our base is a standard eight and a half by five and a half. So eight and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to fold that in half to be five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to furnish my edge with my bone folder. And then I'm going to pull in my Stampin' Trimmer, which of course I've buried under stamps at the moment. So give me one second. There we go. And to create the fold, what we want to do is on the piece that will be our front panel, we actually want to cut at one and a quarter inches up to that fold line. So what I love about our trimmer is the blade has these little lines on it here at the side. So you know that that's where you want to cut to. So when that center line gets to your fold line, then you stop. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So one and a quarter inches to that fold line and stop. So now your card looks like this. You're probably thinking, oh my goodness, what are we doing with these? So the first thing we want to do is we want to attach these two little flaps to our card base. So I'm just using my stamp and seal and I'm just going to put a little adhesive on there. You don't need a ton. And what I like to do is open up that center flap, sorry, dog hairs in the way, and line up the edges of the card to make sure that they're straight and then just give it a good push. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So just a little bit of adhesive. Open up that center flap and then line up the corners. There we go. So there's our card base in form. Now we get to decorate. So the first thing I did is I took the strips of seaside spray that you'll see along the side here and I wanted to give them some texture. So I ran them through our stamp and cut and emboss machine using the painted textures um, 3D embossing folder. So that's this one here. And it looks like somebody's just splattered paint all over. So these strips are cut to one inch by four inches. And I'm just gonna run them through the embossing folder. There's no right or wrong here. You're just going to throw them in your embossing folder. I'm going to grab my machine and I don't usually bring it on camera, but I thought I would tonight just so you can see how it works. So this is the full size stamp and cut and emboss machine. 
and it does fold up to be compact to help save space so it just folds like this nice and easy to carry the mini stamp cut and emboss machine is half the size if not smaller so it's great for saving space and what I love about this machine is all the platforms are numbered and give you graphics of what you need to use with a certain product. So in this case, we're using a 3D embossing folder. So you can see here at the bottom, it says using with 3D embossing folders, you need a one and a four. So this is the one plate. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And then I'm going to sandwich my embossing folder in the center. And then here's my four plate. So this goes on top. And then you just crank the handle. You just want to hold it to give it some tension. It doesn't take much effort. And when it comes through the other side, those pieces of cardstock now have beautiful texture. So, while I have this out, I'm actually going to skip ahead to this piece here. So this lovely rectangle that we stamp on is cut out using the stitched, sorry, stitched so sweetly dies. I had a momentary brain fart. And I am going to pull this back out and it tells me with thin dies, we want a level one, a level two, which is this guy here. And then we want a three. I'm going to lay those on my machine to get them ready. I've got a scrap of white here. And then I'm going to pull in my dies. So these stitched so sweetly dies have these lovely nesting rectangles. And I'm going to use the third largest to cut out the rectangle we want. So once I've got my paper and my die on there, I'm going to put on another number three plate. And again, we're just going to crank that through. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And when it comes out the other side with some static apparently, we have our little rectangle ready to go. And what I love about these stitched so sweetly dies is not only does it cut the shape out for us, but it also puts this beautiful stitch detail on there. I'm just going to move the machine out of the way. I'm not knocking it with my elbow as I try to crack it. All right, so let's go ahead and stick our pieces down. Again, I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal because this is a very detailed piece that's been embossed, I'm going to use a little more adhesive than I normally would because I want it to stick. And then it should fit on those side panels, leaving a nice eighth of an inch border all the way around. Just give it a good push to make sure it's secured. We're going to do the same with our other piece. Again, leaving that eighth of an inch border all the way around. Give it a good push. Hi, Darcy, thanks. Although you get my side profile because the way my desk set up, eventually I'll have front profile once I got it all figured out. <laughs> all right, so moving along, the next layer is a piece of crumb cake. And this piece measures two and three quarters by four inches and then I have a piece of seaside spray measuring two and a half by three and three quarter inches and finally we have our die cut now before I do anything I want to do some stamping so I'm going to put the crumb cake and the white to the side I'm going to pull out my seaside spray and I'm going to pull out some stamps In this case, I'm going to use Seaside Spray Ink. And from the stamp set, I'm using these cute little dots. So this image right here. And we're just going to randomly stamp them across our background. So you can stamp multiple times. So 
so that you get different levels of inkiness. You can rotate it. There's no right or wrong here. We just want to randomly stamp those dots. And once you've got your desired look, you can go ahead and close up your ink or put it to the side so it's out of the way. And then we're going to attach that seaside spray piece to our crumb cake layer. And again, just with our stamp and seal. And it should give that nice eighth of an inch border once again. And then we're going to pull in our die cut. So for this one, I'm using Sahara sand. And I've pulled out that flower image. So you can see it's this image here, but it is much larger than what the case depicts. And I'm going to ink that image in the Sahara sand. And I am going to stamp it in the center of that die cut. We have this beautiful flower balloon. And what I'm going to do next is actually pull in Stampin' Blends. So usually when you use Stampin' Blends, you would stamp in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. But I am using the Sahara Sand because I want those lines to somewhat disappear and not be so harsh. So with our Stampin' Blends, I always like to start with the dark color and then blend with the light. So I'm just going to create some detail here, some contrast, where I think there might be some shadows. What I love about blends is you can go in and blend out any harsh lines and get the really the look that you desire. And every image is going to be slightly different. to come in with my light seaside spray blend and I'm going to blend in those darks and then just finish completing the flower and when I'm blending the the dark with the light I like to go in a circular motion again there's no right or wrong it's just what you feel comfortable with but I find I get a better blend when I use that circular motion as opposed to a back and forth. The Sahara Sand Island just really softens the image. It's not as harsh as if I had done it with the memento. And you can blend as much or as little as you'd like. If you like those harder lines, then by all means, just leave them. And then the same thing with the leaves. I'm coming in with my dark. This is old olive, just to create some shadows and some lines. And I'm actually going to go over the stem with the dark old olive. And fill them in with the light. So there's our image. 
What do you think? It's almost got a watercolor feel to it using that Sahara sand, which is why I like it. It's just so pretty. So now I'm going to attach that right to our layers here. And this should actually give you about a quarter of an inch border all the way around. Just give that a rub. Touch that there. Next, I've pulled in some of our purple cozy ribbon because the general rule of thumb is if you use a color once, you want to use it twice. So to tie it all together, I'm using this ribbon. This will also retire at the end of June or beginning of June, I believe. Um, and it's also got the crumb cake in there, which is why we have that crumb cake there. So I'm just going to tie a knot, slightly covering the stems. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just a standard overhead knot, overhand knot, sorry. And then just pull your ends to get the desired hook, get it to lay flat, bring in your paper snips, trim the ends to your desired length. And then we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to attach that to the front of the card. finished card but of course you need something on the inside so from the same set I've got this little hello friend and I'm gonna pull our seaside spray ink back in I'm going to stamp that on the inside of our card right in the center and there we have a fun card with a unique opening beautiful and elegant with that um, faux watercolor look is, is the, the term I'm looking for. What do you think? While I'm getting cleaned up, let me know, were any of you able to attend the celebration extravaganza that I hosted with some of my demonstrator peers this past weekend? For those of you that don't know, this is our, our um, stamp and chamois. It is great for cleaning your stamps. You just need water, which makes it easy to use. There's no sprays or anything that you require. Oh, yes. And this stamp set, what I love is you have the outlines, but then you also have the fill-in images. To, if you didn't want to color all that, you could stamp it. So it's a great stamp set with lots of possibilities. Thanks, Cora. All right. So that was Touch of Ink. So for our second card, I've actually been challenging myself with the stamp set we're using. It is called Enjoy the Moment, and it was one I received for attending on stage, which is a demonstrator event um, that Stampin' Up! hosts once a year, at least the, the live version, and then they do local events throughout the year. But it is... I've got stuff piled all over it, so I can't actually get at it. It's an auto stamp set that I would have been drawn to. It's perfectly lovely, but it, it's not something that's necessarily my style. So I've been challenging myself to work with it a little bit more. So the card we're making today is using this stamp set. And 
I decided to use this is what we're going to make uh, so it's gray granite and petal pink are the colors and then some very vanilla in here as well so standard card is eight and a half by five and a half so this is no different let's hold that in half Of course, I've lost my bone folder. There it is. Let's so burnish those edges. And then our petal pink layer is five and a quarter by four inches, and we're going to stamp on this. So, this is where our gray granite ink is going to come in. And I've got three different images that we're going to use to create this. So I have these little seeds from the pods. We have a closed pod. And then we have the little twirly birds. I believe they're maple tree seeds. So I'm going to start with the larger of the images, which is the seed pod here. And I'm just going to randomly stamp it rotating it around I think I like that so now I'm going to come in with the twirly birds and fill in some of the spaces Again, rotating it around so that they're not all going the same way. And last, I'm going to come in with the little seeds and fill in even more of those gaps. And I'm happy with that. So what I want to do next is the ribbon. So this is our gray granite shimmer ribbon, which I didn't have handy. So you might have just seen me cut it from my ribbon spool there. And we're going to wrap that around our base. And tie it with a knot slightly off to the left. Give it a good tug. And I'm going to leave my ends long for a moment, but I am going to attach this right to our base now. So I'm going to just use my stamp and seal again. And we have an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Give it a push, make sure it's attached. And then we're just going to put that to the side for a moment because we're going to do some more stamping. So I just have a scrap of um, very vanilla and then some more gray granite. The gray granite we're going to use for our sentiment. So I've picked the friendship is found in simple things from the stamp set. And I'm going to ink that in the gray granite ink. I'm going to stamp that on the gray granite cardstock. And then I'm going to put that to the side because we are going to cut that out using the stamp and cut emboss machine. And on our very vanilla, we are going to stamp this seed pod and this one. Both of them are going to be stamped in the gray granite. And we will be cutting these out by hand. So you can truly just use a scrap as long as the image fits on there. And 
again, I'm going to use Stampin' Blends here. So I pulled in the dark petal pink, and I'm going to use that just on my seed pods here. Just to try and tie some of that color in to what we're doing. All right, so now we're going to use our paper snips. Those out by hand. And I always like to leave a little bit of the very vanilla showing. I don't like to go right up tight to my stamped images when I cut. If you prefer to have it nice and tight, then by all means, go ahead and do that. two little pods. I'm going to pull in my glue dots and on this one here I'm going to put a glue dot right between the two pods where the stem meets and I'm going to use that to attach them to this one. Now we have our pods stuck together we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to attach this to our card base. I'm going to put one on each of the sides and then one in the center. I'm not worrying about the stem because I'm going to tuck that in underneath our ribbon. Let's peel our backs off our cards or off our dimensionals here. We're going to tuck our stems underneath our knot. and stick that to our base. And then once you've got that in, you can trim your ribbon ends to their desired length based on the placement of your pods. There we go. Now we need to cut out our sentiment. And this time we're using the Tasteful Labels dies, which is this great collection. And we're going to use this guy here. I'm going to pull our machine back in. And once again, this will be a one, two, three. Our cardstock, our die, and another three on top. Through the machine. Fold this back up so it's out of the way. Make a prick 
carry a stack. Give me one second. There we go. All right. And now this is going to get attached to our base using dimensionals once again. Closer to the top right and then of course a little sprinkle of some bling these are our champagne rhinestones and I picked these rather than regular rhinestones because I felt they matched the petal pink color a little bit better and wanted to try and tie some more of that into the card and then we have our spattering of jewels and there is our second card for the evening. So there we have it. Two quick and easy cards using two very different stamp sets. One putting me outside of my comfort zone, but I'm happy with how it turned out. And I do have to say, um, this design is actually cased from another demonstrator. I was searching for some inspiration and stumbled across her sample using different color schemes and really enjoyed it. I can't remember off the top of my head who that was, but I will make sure to give her credit in my comments. I'm going to come back over here and hi, uh, thanks so much for joining. As always, I'm happy that you join and craft with me on Monday nights. Um, don't forget it is celebration, so you do qualify for celebration rewards with every increment of $60 that you spend right now. Um, there are a variety of items to choose from, from papers to stamps um, and lots of different types of stamp sets. The Oso oh Ombre Designer Series paper, which is one of the rewards, is currently back ordered, but they are expecting more in. So if that was one of the rewards you were hoping to get, don't despair. There will be more, but you might want to pick something else in the the interim and then maybe place another order later if uh, if you're so inclined to get that. I have welcomed two new team members in the past week and I am so excited to have them on board. I'm always looking to add team members so if you're looking for a sense of community and friends that we you will make a um, by joining the Stampin' Up! community, I would love to have you as part of my team. You'll receive training from me. You'll become part of our group, which is like a, a little family. Um, you'll also receive training from Stampin' Up! And of course, the discount is the biggest draw to that. Our starter kit is by far the best deal in the catalog. So if you like a good deal, the starter kit is something to consider. It is $135 Canadian. You get to choose $165 worth of product, any product from any of the current catalogs or clearance rack. So that means our annual catalog, the new mini catalog, or the clearance rack. Um, so totaling $165 and when you join during celebration, you're also going to get five packs of designer series paper um, in regals, subtles, brights, in color and neutrals. So five different packs. It's about an $80 value. So really you're getting about $240 worth of product for $135. And if you're on a, in Ontario, there's no shipping and no tax added to that. So if you have questions about the starter kit and taking advantage of the best deal going, um, certainly drop me a message in the comments or send me a private message if you want to inquire privately. There is no obligation to sell. You can simply be a hobby demo and take advantage of the discount on your own supplies. Um, but if you do want to turn it into a business, I can certainly help you with that along the way as well. Join me next Monday night. We will be doing more crafting right here. Same bat time, same bat channel, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thanks so much for joining.